glory of the king. Thing, 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 thing. These are also the proverbs of Solomon, which the men of Hezekiah, king of Judah, copied out. A war, a war, a war, a war. These are also the proverbs of Solomon, which the men of Hezekiah, king of Judah, copied out. A war. In the fear, in the fear, the rice speck of rice, the far right. How by well, well, how by well, by humility in the fear, in the fear, the rice speck of rice, the far right. Our riches and honors and, and life, 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 life. Well, them are thorns, thorns, and them are thorns, thorns, and them are, them are, them are thorns, thorns, and snares. And there's no way to the forward of he, your, keep his soul, he will be safe from them. Be a son, train up your child in the way that them should go. And they will not depart from it when them turn so old. Well, a good name, a good name is rather to be chosen. Yes, a good name, a good name, try to be chosen. Better be cold and frozen. Yes, no for them, no for them, no for them. Don't no 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 nothing. Yes, no for them, no for them. Them stumbling and the worship, the bling bling. But it's one thing them know about the bling bling, the bling bling. No for bling bling have wings. Yes, our riches, riches, riches fly away and become nothing but a good name. A good name is rather to be chosen. Yes, a good name, a good name, a good name is rather to be chosen. Good name, a good name, a good name, rather to be chosen. Good name, a good name is meant to be looking cold and then frozen. Not for them, not for them, not for them, no, 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 Shabbat Shalom Senbet Salam 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 Aho 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 Salam Tana Tana is telling Shabbat Shalom Senbet Salam Now as we continue As we continue our sabbatical reading and feeding and the sabbatical study we are now entering chapter 6 of um, Numbers, the book of Numbers, or Riza Khulq. And this is uh, the Midbar, the second Midbar. Um, the second reading from the book of Numbers, which is the 35th Sabbatical. This is the part 2 of the B part of the Sabbatical study. And we're going to continue in the Nazarite, it's to speak on the Nazarite. And this is chapter 6, a very, very important portion of scripture. And there's a lot of questions that many have. And there's a lot of misunderstanding uh, coupled with um, this particular chapter that needs to be clarified in this particular study. And we hope to touch on some more of the clarity and hopefully make this much more clear to those who listen and to those who hear. Now, this is the 35th sabbatical um, portion. This is the 35th sabbatical portion in our weekly Torah or Orit readings. And this 35th portion is known in the Hebrew as Naso, in the Royal Amharic or the Arab, the Revised Amharic Bible is known as Wuset, Wuset. And this reading covers Numbers chapter 4, verse 21, to Numbers chapter 7, verse 89. And we covered uh, from 4 and 21, 22, that section. And we just finished touching on the section concerning a, 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 a man and, and a woman, a wife, unfaithful wife, what was prescribed concerning the spirit of jealousy and now we're going to touch on a, a very beautiful moral order a section of the scriptural reading in the book of numbers that is known as a beautiful moral theocratic order that's found in chapters 6 to chapter uh, 7 
chapter 6 to chapter 7. Now, this speaks on separation. There's some keys here. Separation. It speaks on separation. In chapter 6 of Numbers, verses 1 to 12, it speaks on, on, on worship or worship. In the same chapter, verses 13 to 21, it speaks on the barakat, the blessing, verse 22 to 27. And this chapter speaks on service, agelgalot. In chapter 7, verses 1 to 89, which would conclude this particular 35th Sabbath portion and the sabbatical reading that we know as wused and naso or take. Speaking of take, also the sum take, wused, take, naso. Now, to begin off, let's begin off by Marinya. Let's begin off with the Amharic Torah portion, the Orit Zechulkwe Mi'raf Sidis, chapter 6, uh, from verse 1. Besim Ab, wa weld, wa manifest a kadus, a hadu amlak, and demilo. Egezi Abiharim Musain in di below Tanagaro and the sustainer Yahweh Baruku spake to Musa Moses saying Le Israya le Jocha Negaracho So Wim say to Le Egezi Abihir Rasuna Yetaleye Yadarigzen Ye Naz Rawineta Sileta Bisal Speak to the children of Israel, the Bane Yisrael, and say to them, when either or either man or woman shall separate themselves to vow a vow of a Nazarite, to separate themselves to the sustainer Yahweh, Kuter Sos, Koina Tejna, Kamiya Sakura met at a Rasun Yetaleya Yadarig, Ko Oin Oin, Kalela Negara Yemigenya win a homed at a yait at a Ye Oin Mach Mak Yait at a Ye Oin Isheta Oim Zabiba Ayibla. He shall separate himself from wine and strong drink and shall drink no vinegar of wine or vinegar of strong drink. Neither shall he drink any liquor of grapes nor eat moist grapes or dried. Kuter Arat, verse 4. Arasun yetaleye badaregbeta warato hulu ka oina yahono wina negar hulu. Ka wustu afray a jamro is ka gafef dressa yibla. All the days of his separation shall he eat nothing that is made of the vine tree, from the kernels even to the husk. Kutar amist rasuna lemelietas leta badaregabeta warato hulu. But Rasulaya Melacha Ayadarism Legazi Abihera Yetaleya Beta Waratiskia Fetsema de Res Yetek Edesa Yuhona Ye Rasunemat Agora Yasadgal. All the days of the vow of his separation, there shall no razor come upon his head until the days be fulfilled in the which he separateth himself to the sustainer Yahweh, he shall be holy and shall let the locks of the hair of his head grow. Kuter Siddis, le egezi avihir arasun yetaleye badaregebeto warato hulu, wode arasa, Ayikreb, all the days that he separated himself to sustain a Yahweh, he shall come at no dead body. Kutar Sabbat, le amlakuwa yadaregoa is isleta 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 be rasu alaya nauna. 
abatu oim natu oim wandumu oim khtua simutu sonatu na yarkus bacho he shall not make himself unclean for his father or for his mother for his brother or for his sister when they die because the consecration of his god is upon his head kutar cement arasun yetelaye badaregebe tawarat hulu le egezi abher yetekedese no all the days of his separation he is holy to the sustainer yahweh kutar zetain so ma bat a gobua din get a be motor yet a layo in them a rasuna be a rekis a rsua be me a nets a betak and a rasuna ye latch be sabatanya work and a ye latch o and if any man die very suddenly by him and he have defiled the head of his consecration then he shall shave his head in the day of his cleansing on the seventh day shall he shave it kutar asr be simtanya wmak an hulata wano socha wim hulata ya rigba glagaloch wada magnanya wadin kwana da jaf Oda kahnu yamta, and on the eighth day he shall bring two turtles or two young pigeons to the priest to the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Kutarasaraan kahnu manduna lechatiata mesoaeta hulatanya wema lemikat ella mesoaeta yakarbewal. Raisa mayatanessa, hat yata ser toal na, yasa tesaria letal, beziamak and arasuna yik edesawal. And the priest shall offer the one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering and make an atonement for him, for that he sinneth by the dead, and shall hallow his head the same day kutar asara hullet rasun yetelaye yadaragabetuna waratem la egziabher yikedsal ye and ametma tabata tabota le bedel mesoita yamta naz rawinatu gin rekasalna yal fawarata hullu Kentu Yohona, and he shall consecrate to the sustainer Yahweh the days of his separation, and shall bring a lamb of the first year for a trespass offering. But the days that were before shall be lost, because his separation was defiled. Now let's pause at verse 12 here because this is the first part of this beautiful moral theocratic order that's found in Numbers or Ritza Hulqa Mi'raf Siddis chapter 6 from chapter 6 to 7 and the first part is on separation. The separation is worship, worship, worship or worship which is really worship blessing barakat agelgalot service and there's a there's a link uh, put this on as a reference note see hebrews the book of hebrews in the hadith kidan chapter 13 verses 12 to 16 now the nazarite nazarite n a z a r i t e which is more accurately nazirite n a z i r i t e it means one who is separated the nazirite was a person of either sex male or female this is what we have in kutar hulet which says le egezi abher lejoch nigracho speak to the children of israel le israel Lijoch Nigaracho, 
so ወይም ሰይት ለእግዚአብሔር ራሱን የተለየ ያደርግ ዘን የናዛራዊነት ለታ ቢሳል speak to the children of Israel and say to them when either or either man or woman shall separate themselves to vow a vow of a nazarite to separate themselves to separate themselves to the sustainer yahweh now what is very important to understand about the nazarite the nazarite vow is first and foremost it says speak to the children of israel that's the key right there that's the condition you can grow locks all you want you could be a nanti dread or dreadlocks but that does not mean that you are a nazarite unless it's under this condition in spirit and in truth because it's let israel lijoch nigaracho it didn't say speak to anybody it says speak to the children of israel to the bane israel to israel lijoch whether it's a man or as a woman if they shall separate themselves first thing to vow a vow so the first separation is themselves in vowing a vow of a nazarite to separate themselves to the stain of yahweh so there's two separations first is separating oneself in order to make this vow and then in making the vow of a nazarite it is separating themselves to sustain a yahweh now there are some conditions here now is either a person of either sex who are wholly separated to the sustain of yahweh but the key here is being a child of israel this is the key this is the key right here and it's important for us to emphasize this especially as we speak to our fellow rastafari in sin and rastafari and i and i as rastafari need to understand this is why the identity of who we are you know saying as the once lost but now found bait is rael is wana wana is very very important you know saying when we now consider the vow of a nazarite because ha elohim told moshe muse moses to instruct the israelites the beta israel the children of israel the israel lejoch about the vow of a nazir about the vow of a nazarite should one wish or desire to set himself or to set herself apart for ha elohim for god so when ones would look at what occurred before speaking about the spirit of jealousy and 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 the whole um the whole uh unfaithful wife issue that was taken up in the last portion of this teaching and in the last chapter one might come to a a a a, a false conclusion that it was is sexist this is where a lot of folks think well the bible that's way back then and it was sexist but what's very clear about the nazarite value from such a time that a man or a woman you understand had equal opportunity to separate themselves to holiness to kedisana you understand and to yahweh you understand and to yahweh now the nazarite was to abstain we learn from wine from intoxicants from from vinegar grapes raisins and anything that was obtained from the grape vine not just from vines in general cuz there's some there's some um some rasters that have thought that this meant that no fruit fruit of the vine they were supposed to take because they were not studying this diligently you understand and that's a shame that's a shame that if they think that that this is saying don't eat of any kind of food first of all we have to understand it in its context and then we have to overstand this in christos in the christ now it goes on to say that no razor was to touch the nazarite's head until the completion of the nazarite term for whatever term 
whatever time period that one would vow themselves to separate themselves to Yahweh. And the Nazarite was not to go near a dead person, even a father, mother, brother, or sister when they die. Now, there's a, there's a, there's a context of this, you understand, which needs to be understood because in those days and time, there was not like an undertaker, you understand? You know, like today they have undertakers, so forth and so on. But there is a certain consciousness, there's a spiritual, there's, a, there's the actual um, situation and time that it took place and that we need to understand. And then in Christ and through Christ, taking that veil off of our eyes, we need to overstand the vow of a Nazarite spiritually spiritually so make a make a note of uh, about that because abstention from wine the symbol of mere natural joy psalms psalms 104 and 15 it points it out was the expression of a devotedness which found all of its joy all of the joy is in yahweh all of the joy is in Yahweh. This is what this vow really signifies. And there's some very, some very beautiful scriptures that actually goes to, to, to back it up like, like Psalm 80, 87 and 7. There is um, Psalm 90, 98 and, 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 and 12. There is um, Habakkuk uh, 3 and 18. There is uh, Philipp Philippians um, uh, 3, 1 and, and, and 3, as well as 4, 4 and 10. That also speaks of this joy, this joy, desita, simchat, you understand, in Yahweh, in the sustainer. Now, the, the long hair has been thought by some to be naturally a reproach to a man in according to one particular type of interpreting of first corinthian chapter 11 and 14 was that once the visible sign of the nazarite separation and of his willingness his willingness or her willingness for that matter to be a reproach to bear the reproach just like it is today in this time among the world you understand for Yahweh's sake especially in the context of being beta Israel and having a spiritual spiritual mentality in the words of uh, the, the, the 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 true Israel is the spiritual Israel but being Israel you understand and consciously intentionally vowing the vow now the type that's found its perfect fulfillment this type of nazir has found the perfect fulfillment in yehoshua in Jesus, in yeshua who was quote according to scriptures hebrews hebrews uh, 7 and 26 he was holy harmless undefiled and separate from sinners who was utterly separated he was totally completely separated to abba to the ab to the father to conduce abba touch and to our holy father we find this in john chapter 1 verse 18 john chapter 6 verse 38 and he is he who allowed no mere natural claims he, he uh, Yeshua allowed no natural blood claims to hinder or to divert him. And we find this true in Matthew chapter 12 verses 46 to verse 50. And Yeshua is he, Jesus is he who for the sake of his unique, the unique work he denied himself the innocent and the natural joy of wife and child and home on the natural and naturalistic level. He, he separated himself. So we find that the Nazir 
in its perfect fulfillment. In the perfect fulfillment, we find this in Yeshua. We find this in Jesus. We find this in Jesus. He who was holy, harmless, undefiled, and separate. And separate from sinners. Now, this is important for us to understand. And this is important for us to observe. Because when we study it from the Old Testament, we're getting the basic foundation. But no one in Old Testament, there were Nazarites in Old Testament time, but none of them perfected it. They did it, but they didn't perfect it. But it's in the Hadith Kidan, it's in the person of Girta Iesus, of Adoni Yeshua, that we find a perfect fulfillment, even for the reasons that we have already named. There's he who was holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners. It is he who was utterly separated to the Father and to the will of the Father. It is Yeshua who allowed no man natural claims, no natural claims to hinder or to divert him, no natural claims of family or, or blood, kin and kith and kin relationships to divert him from being holy, harmless, undefiled, and separate from sinners, to, to divert him or hinder him from being separated to Kedus Abbat. And it is he who is Yeshua for the sake of his Adoni's unique work that he denied himself that natural joy of wife and children and home as a perfect exemplar and example and fulfillment of the Nazarite vow. So when we say that Jesus Christos, Yeshua HaMashi, he fulfilled the Old Testament types. This is one example of that. Now, the teaching of the Nazarite vow, you understand, speaks that if a person were to die suddenly near a Nazarite, the Nazarite was to shave his or her head on the seventh day. Then on the eighth day, the Nazarite was to bring two turtle doves or two pigeons to the priest who was to offer one as a chatiyat meswa'it and the other as a yemikat el meswa'it, one as a sin offering and one as a burnt offering. That same day, the Nazarite was to reconsecrate that very same day. This is the key. A lot of folks miss these, 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 these details. That that very same day, the Nazarite, according to Numbers chapter 6, was to reconsecrate. You know, was rededicate, relivicate his or her head. To rededicate the Nazarite term and to bring a lamb in its first year as a penalty as a penalty offering now on the day that a nazarite completed his or her term whatever amount of time that they vowed for the nazarite was to be brought to the entrance of the tent of meeting and presented a male and present and present a male lamb in its first year for a burnt offering a ewe lamb in its first year for a sin offering and a ram for an offering of well-being a basket of unleavened cakes unleavened wafers spread with oil and meal offerings we learn this in numbers chapter 6 verses 13 to 15 now the priest was to present the offerings and the nazarite was to shave his or her head her consecrated hair and put the hair on the fire under the sacrifice of well-being numbers chapter 6 verse 16 to verse 18 now although in and through Yeshua he's done away with those animal sacrifices and and types he's the fulfillment of it but there's an important principle and application that we can learn 
in and through Christ from studying Torah and learning, well, what was the context in the old? And then we see Yeshua, the fulfillment in the new. But there is a, a sense that needs to be understood concerning the Nazarite, the Nazarite vow. Now, connect it with this very same chapter. Connect it with this very same chapter. Do we have the priestly blessing? The priestly blessing is found in this very same chapter the priestly blessing now the priestly blessing we find the priestly blessing verse 22 of this chapter we have the priestly blessing and the sustainer yahweh spake to moses saying speak to aaron and to his son saying on this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel saying to them, the sustainer Yahweh bless thee and keep thee. The sustainer Yahweh make his face shine upon thee and be gracious to thee. The sustainer Yahweh lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee salam and give thee shalom. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel and I will bless them. This is the very important section right here, this priestly blessing. And this priestly blessing, quite interestingly enough, is found in the very same chapter that is dedicated and devoted to the vow of the Nazarite. What is the connection? There's, there's a beautiful connection. It is, it's so beautiful and it's so obvious because Ha Elohim told Moses to instruct Haron, to instruct Aaron and his sons that they should bless the Israelites with this particular blessing, with this specific blessing that we find here at the end of this chapter begin at verse uh hayahu let verse 22 in deep below tanagaro and the stain of yahweh spake to moses saying le aronina le le jochua negracho speak to aaron and to his sons saying ye israel in le jocha sita barcoacho in deep Beluacho, on this wise or in this way, ye, you all, shall bless the Bane Yisroel, shall bless ye Israel in the Jocha Sitabar Kuacho, in di Beluacho, saying to them, saying to them the following Egaziavi her ye Yet abic a him, Egaziavi herra fito na yabarale, Yerara le him, Egaziabi herra fito na wede ante yanesa, Salamene ma yeset e. The sustainer Yahweh bless thee and keep thee. The sustainer Yahweh make his face shine upon thee and be gracious to thee. The sustainer Yahweh lift up his countenance or his face upon thee and give thee peace and give thee salam. Give thee peace. Verse 27. In Dihu. Like this. Semen be Israel lijoch la yadergalu. In him ebarakachualu. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel and I will bless them. See, it's key. The blessing and the connection with the name is key. Is key. So when it says that Yahweh bless you and protect you, keep you, Yahweh deal kindly and gracious with you, Yahweh bestow his favor 
upon you and grant you peace. Now, there is some talk, speculation, reasoning about different particular hand signs as though a sign language of the blessing. For example, some may have seen this particular hand sign and they say, well, this is the positioning of the fingers of the, the Kahin or the Kohanim during the priestly blessings. Others have proposed that, well, yes, there is a particular hand positioning of fingers, but some have said that the position of fingers is, is different, is like this. Now, we are not going to go into the particular detail of the particular hand positioning here, but yes, there is symbolic sort of like sign language gestures that are used you understand you could call them glyphs you call them mantras you understand some call them mantras you know what is said and then there is mundras which is our actual hand signs that communicate you understand that communicate even the blessings so this is one and this and it is and there's another particular but there are certain hand uh, positioning of fingers that are used by the kahinat or the kohanim during this particular priestly blessing but the key thing is is learning this particular blessing this is the blessing that yahweh says along with his name being set on the Dekika Israel, the Bane Israel, Ye Israel Lejoch, he will bless them as his name is set on the people. So it's very important to see that connection right there. And what we're going to do is touch on the next part of this sabbatical, which is going to conclude on the consecrating of the tabernacle, the consecrating of the tabernacle and it's a, a a pretty long chapter 89 89 verses but as with the rest of this teaching it's important for us to familiarize ourselves with it you understand and to see what the connection this has with the fulfillment in the hadith kidan and the fulfillment in Adoni Yeshua in Geta Jesus Christos. So my brothers and sisters, stay tuned. Stay tuned for that. And once again, Shabbat Shalom. Senbet Salam. And we love all the good people, them, you know. But then the wicked Babylonian them come with some shit, you know, some situation that come down upon earth.
hagare nuri hagare hagare nuri hagare nuri hagare hagare nuri hagare nuri hagare hagare nuri hagare nuri hagare 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 nuri oni ala karna in the wolf in the wolf of rari hagare nuri hagare 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 nuri ibn ala huna zindaru zindaru lekna Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up.